stand in line To face the music and speak with these hands of mine like a fan of mine You on this team and plan to shine, you probably stab his spine You watch who you stand in front of, you watch who you stand behind The bullets protect you, they'll get everybody you played with That chopper pick niggas up with no warning, it's a slave ship Bad boys too, you know when Marcus Dardoff in the gate I meet Reggie at the door and put a 40 in his face When you think of B-Magic, what comes to mind? Revolutionary puncher, St. Louis legend, Midwest legend A battler that possessed the best flow in all the battle rap or do you think of an individual who fell from grace and could never recapture the glory days as the best battler to do it? Regardless of the stance you take, one cannot deny the impact, influence, and contributions that B-Magic has given the culture in his 10 plus year career. I am cognizant of the idea that Battle Rap's attention span is as short as the hour hand on the clock. However, I would be doing a disservice if I did not highlight the integral pieces of Battle Rap history and the individuals who provided the best moments the culture could ask for. Welcome to the Speaker Our Language show. In today's video, we will primarily focus on the apex of B-Magic's career. Here, we will examine the peak that garnered praise and recognition from battlers and fans alike. More specifically, the time period between 2011 and 2014. In my previous Apex installment, I touched on the states that contributed to the Midwest movement. You had Illinois, Michigan, and Missouri setting the foundation for the advancement of battle rap. Missouri, more specifically St. Louis, were the front runners of the regime, with world class acts like Averb, Young Ill, and Hitman. However, the second wave of the movement would occur, and a new talent would emerge from the same city. B Magic's battle rap journey begins in the hometown of St. Louis' own Street Status Battle League. He would establish himself in the earlier portion of the 2010s, clashing with VI the Great, Prophet, SK, and the St. Louis legend Remedy. After a few strong acts, he caught the eye of the URL platform and would eventually become one of the main acts associated with the new crop of talent the URL was trying to promote. What was commonly known as the Proving Grounds, he match would become one of the new faces of the battle rap revolution. Yeah, I kill shit coming through your area. Kick your fucking door in, we coming in the barrier. Took your bitch overseas, but wait, it gets scarier. We fucked her on the plane, she was coming to America. <laughs> On March 26, 2011, in the first ever Proven Ground matchup in Battle Rap history, B Magic took on Clean Paper, another hungry prospect from Michigan. This battle was extremely entertaining and made for one of the more refreshing style clashes you'll receive in the earlier portion of the Battle Rap scene. Clean Paper's unorthodox style, charisma, and comedic satire clashed with B Magic's compact, bar heavy, name flipping style. This displayed his wittiness and smooth demeanor. Battlers and fans were astonished by these two performers. This battle holds a great deal of impact because of the quality and because it legitimizes the need for new talent. B Magic, specifically, showed that even though he wasn't polished yet, he was extremely gifted and was a promising up and comer. His second round was extremely impressive and displayed his uncanny ability to string along potent punches. This battle still stands as the highest viewed PG of all time. Magic open long space, chop it how you see through Make it sing for cash money, I call it TQ mm. <laughs> I disqualify niggas especially from the DQ Throw you off the roof like Bishop because I'm GQ mm. Just gotta make a scene, hit this bitch up in his chest I gotta play the king, my rhyme saying mean Come on with the shovel, give him nine, Johnny five How I'm rolling with the metal oh. Me and my niggas whooping ass when the boss toss As soon as I give my circle the word Cross puzzle. If you don't like what I'm saying, then fight me now. See, I was with your boo, see? And she wiped me down. Let's get to it, just do it, Nike style. Gave her the cool Mo D, so how you like me now? <laughs> On June 11th, 2011, B Magic will return to the URL platform and battle another hungry up and comer, John John Nadon. John John had a great deal of experience coming from the grind time format, and B Magic was picking up steam from his high profile PG and street status matchups. With only a week notice, both MCs put on a great performance in a one rounder bout. For historical context, this is the battle where John John first introduced his patented multiple choice sequence. And this is also the first battle where B-Magic put conceded on notice. 
about that would prove to be very monumental in B. Magic's career. With less than three months between his last appearance, Magic showed immense improvement with potent punchlines, a variety of flow switchups, and adding a bit of comedic value to his rapid. While his PG with Clean really showed his talent, this one rounder displayed progression and a promising future for the St. Louis Rising Star. Mm. Not one nigga in here think you a pistol popper. Fucking punk magic chin breaking. Nigga gonna need a sub for his pen station. Uh, I shoot the kill, ain't no skin grazing. I end the show with a bow, that's a temptation. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I get long dome like Stewie head. Banging cans behind your car like a newlywed. Think you sick? Well, be magic, it's the Sudafed. This right hook will give you them Zab Judah noodle legs. <laughs> Proceeding the one rounder, Magic was still working his craft with homely clashes against Heartless and City. However, Magic officially made the leap from a PG talent to a talent that was heavy in the Yaro mix as well. The match would gain major looks, including being on the undercard of the Motor City Mayhem event against John Cannon, a very good battle with Rosenberg, another hungry up and comer, and an extremely entertaining battle against Real Deal, a seasoned veteran at the time. This will all lead up to his toughest matchup thus far against another up and comer that was coming off a classic performance against JC. On November 17th, 2012, Magic took on Chilla Jones on the Revelations card. By this time, both individuals had a major buzz behind their name. On paper, the battle seemed to be the most competitive battle on the card because of their lyrical capabilities. With B Magic's back to back punching style and Chilla's back to back scheming style, both individuals were extremely bar heavy and constructed some of the best material that Battle Rap had to offer at the time. In this battle, Chilla varied his style with chain punching and intertwined with the schemes. However, the magic potency was off the charts and his flurries of name flips and similes was too much to bear. Some of Magic's best quotables of his career came from this battle. This encounter served as one of the best battles on the card and you could argue that Magic had the best overall performance on the card. This was easily the best three rounds that Magic put together at the time. He put the culture on notice and was letting everyone know that he was polished, he was confident, and most importantly, the show arrived. I put Jones in a box, better say your grace, you know, Grace Jones, Jones box, say your grace, that Tommy Lee Jones, man in black like Agent K. And this nigga schemes, I don't get the jump. <laughs> what thug rap about solar systems like that shit is crunk? <laughs> He say a bar and slow it down like we missed the junk. We gonna call Chilla Johnny Cage cause he split the punch. Oh! Hey, Jones, ooh, boy, you fucking with a heavyweight. Your soul lift, I mean magic make him levitate. Your bitch can die just for picking up your celly late. I'll put a couple in this top like a wedding cake. <laughs> Preceding his last URL appearance, B Magic would take off a couple months before taking on two blockbuster matchups during the spring slash summer time of 2013. With just two years of being on the URL platform, Magic became a fan favorite and a household name when it came to punchers in the battle rap culture. On May 18th, 2013, meeting him up the ladder was none other than Tay Rock, another URL mainstay. B Magic was receiving a proverbial push that battlers get when the fans are behind them. Before starting the bout, Smack White put out the announcement that B-Magic would not only be on Night of Main Events 3, but he would take on Charlie Clips. However, B-Magic stayed the course and remained focused on his opponent. Understanding how dangerous Tay Rock was, Magic came with three rounds to match Rock's intensity, aggression, and energy in the bout. The clash made for a heavily contested battle that featured some of the best lines in each of their career. While this battle is debated by most, one can argue that Magic has some of the best lines of the battle and probably the best rock flip of all time. This battle not only propelled both performance, but it started off Magic's best year stretch of his career. You say shit like, Rocker get tipped off. I'm pissed off that you still making punches about Criss Cross. That miggity max shit, slap whoever told you that shit hard. Trip dog and I stage is shooting like Rick Ross. Big ball. When I spray cans into him, yo danger. Dying is so easy, a caveman can do it. Leaking fluids, fucking with your boy magic. I murk your bitch, open up on the front of your car like Urkel Whip. Dumb the Marco, the Marco. You better stay in a rock place. I rush more just to press a dent in a rock face. Dumb the Marco, the Marco.
Continuing his incredible start in 2013, V-Magic would take on a massive fan favorite and one of the most dangerous battlers in the world, Charlie Clips. Not only was he facing the biggest opponent of his career at the time, but he was also part of the biggest card he's ever been on. Gnome 3 was the biggest gnome in that point in time, featuring Hitman Holla, Conceited, T-Rex, Disaster, Chilla Jones, DNA, K-Shine, Big T, Stu Surf, and Hollow the Don on his return to Battle Rap. Magic got punched in the mouth early with Clip's first round. Clip's was able to rock the crowd the entire round and it seemed to be too much for B Magic to overcome. However, Magic rose to the occasion and delivered three really good rounds. With the proper pacing, resiliency, and tunnel vision, Magic was able to deliver many potent bars that resonated in the building and on camera. His relentless bar for bar approach worked its way through the charisma and freestyling that Charlie Clips usually used to decimate his opponent. Till this day, people still deem B Magic as the first battler to beat Clips, clearly in a full length battle. This battle not only solidified his status as a top tier talent, but it also pushed him into that conversation of being one of the best battlers in the world at the moment. Jumping Kappa nigga, step show. Get blunt objects across your mouth. Let's smoke. I got something in store for you, dog. Petco, a leader of blood, a run out him like death row. I said, yeah. <laughs> Who bars piff? Very potent. Well, now you looking at the nigga who do heavy smoking, steady loking, run shit. Jesse Owens, he got wheezy after a hook like Kelly Rowland. <laughs> I think Clip's nice, but at the same time, you gotta switch it up. If you wanna keep it the same, fine. Use mixtapes for freestyles, then battle with the same rhymes. I'm a good fisherman. I keep catching them using the same lines. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I leave enemies stretched in the enemy death. No energy, energy left. Knock his noodles, reenact John Kennedy death. When I take his life from him like identity theft. You listening? <laughs> Exiting his known battle, B-Magic kept his foot on the gas and delivered another all-time performance against DNA. The Soul Survivor card was a collaborative event with Sneaker Beast, and it was meant to spread the URL brand and showcase the talent on the platform. B-Magic took it upon himself to show how deadly of a battler he can be and garner one of the most dominant wins in this catalog. There's not much to say about this battle. B-Magic was incredible all three rounds and was relentless with his rapid chain punching and name flip. He was levitating with incredible flow pockets, cadences that perfectly coalesced with the punchlines he was delivering. One can say this was his victory lap after Gnome. This battle contains one of my favorite bars of all time. Legit, hit your chin, go sleep. Erica Strip, and I ain't talking about a window seat. Kill a real Midwest nigga that a barrier. Don't let me find Eric in the middle of America. Now breathe on him, nigga. Listen, youngin, you gotta dine on deck. Rapper Randy Orton, legend killer, I bomb on vets. I creep up on the side of Eric, put the nine on chest. Then bullets come out St. John like Ryan Nortes. Bars. <laughs> me. Niggas gonna see the killer in me, the gorilla MC, lifting heat out the vanilla Caprice. Scope St. John. Man. I say, Scope St. John and Bank Mine, he getting some sleep. I wet the side of St. John like the Caribbean Sea. Fuck. <laughs> To close out his amazing year, B Magic made an appearance on the first ever Born Legacy event on December 14, 2013. His opponent this time was the UFF Season 1 champion Ill Will. In a Midwest vs Midwest collision, these two put on the best battle on the card and one of the best Born Legacy battles of the entire series. Once again showing no complacency, B Magic delivered three good rounds of great rapping in a small room setting to match Will's top notch material. While the majority may state that the battle favors Will more than Magic, one must contextualize the battle in its whole entirety. It has high replay value, it was extremely contested, and it stands as one of Will's best performance of his career, a testament to the greatness and the respect he had for B-Magic. The battle has grew to be more and more favorable for B-Magic as the years go by. Spray them. I sent him to his maker. Magic even hit the neighbors just to get my point across like the ending of a prayer. Like, oh! Hit him with a fit. Get it if you trip. Boot wheel like his unpaid tickets on the whip. Oh! And body act with the fifth like a drunk driver. Oh! Dusty ass nigga. <laughs> Tell him calm it down before I bond. 
from that nigga. Another conceited reject, I got a palm. That nigga slow it down, you speed it up. We got a cognac nigga. Oh! Coming into 2014, the buzz grew larger and larger because of how great Magic was the previous year. Magic still kept pressing forward and established a pretty stacked itinerary. This includes the likes of Daylight in January on one of the biggest cards of the year on UW's High Stakes and JC on Guerrilla Warfare's Crown Event in March. Both were extremely entertaining battles where Magic was highly dependable and consistently produced quality material. However, in its next two battles against Rum Nitty on KOTD's Vendetta 2 and Big T on URL's Gnome 4 card, Magic experienced a tad bit of turbulence and cleanliness. This was extremely uncommon for Magic at the time, and it was hinting towards a sign of fatigue. In this time period, B Magic was battling at a much more frequent pace than he was used to. The masterful thing about these two battles in particular is that even with the turbulence and slip ups, Magic was still on the winning side of each of the battles, and the momentum was still very high. Magic would enable the fans to take a sigh of relief when he took on Sharon on UW's Annihilation card. In a quick exhibition, Magic improved from his last two showings and caught his second win before his biggest showdown. Knock on his door as soon as he opened the can of blam. Take her everybody in the crib. I'm a family man. Your whole house better spread like a family plan. <laughs> on September 28th, 2014, Magic took on Conceited on Summer Madness 4, one of the best Summer Madness cards of all time. Not only was this the matchup that Magic has wanted for over three years, but it was also built up by the fans, media, and culture as a whole. Conceited as the pioneer of punchlines and expansive wordplay was always deemed the king of punchlines in the sport. Magic was extremely motivated to take the crown and also show the difference between himself and the legend. There would be no passing of the torch. Magic was going to take the torch by will and force. Setting the tone early, B Magic opens up with a really good first round that featured amazing flows and fluidity between his punches. He caught fire early and was gaining traction at the blink of an eye. However, displaying why he was a legend, Conceited delivered a crazy first round to extinguish that flame that Magic ignited. Similar to the Eclipse battle, Magic stayed on course and powered through the storm with a barrage of haymakers that ultimately washed away any chances of Conceited winning the battle. B Magic took the last two rounds decisively, one of the best SM battles at the time. A new talent was crowned, and this night was Magic's pinnacle, the culmination of three years of progression, resilience, and mastering the craft of battle rap. Reggie, I hop up out the Cavalier, them shots spring, bandana on me with the 30-30. I'm John Wayne, conceited, gonna catch every shell it contain. Then I'm running back to the Cavalier, LeBron James. This boys turn up from where they move and looting and shooting at boys. St. Louis truest. You seen the news and we shooting them toys. You ain't ruining them moving on you and your unit of yours. Keep the beef. I swear. To keep the beef fresh, I brought something aluminum for you, my first Cause a tech of blam. I'm from a place where they killed Mike. You should never land. I'm a hot dog. If y'all grilling, you better scram my popcorns. If anybody in concession stand. I say, at your call with the 40 on my waist. He walk in the parking lot, leaving the party finish shake. Bad boys too. You know, when Marcus daughter finna date, I meet Reggie at the door and put a 40 in his face. As for all things in life, nothing lasts forever. Shortly after his encounter with Conceited, he put on a solid performance against Big K to close out his 2014 run. 2015 would emerge, and the decline became extremely noticeable with smaller scale matchups, shorter rounds, lack of preparation, and overall lack of hunger. However, I will not say every performance from Magic thereon was bad. Magic would still have really good performances against Ty Law, Chef Trez, Iron Solomon, Eat Ness, Family Man Hayes, Bourne, coffee and chess from 2015 to 2020 however those performances were few and far in between and couldn't match the other collection of performances that weren't up to par a part of what makes the legend be magic and epic is how quick everything turned the reason why the drop off seemed so steep is because of how highly regarded magic was and the potential he had people were on the verge of considering him one of the greatest of all time but like a lot of legends and older generation veterans consistency was the achilles heel but that doesn't take away from his status as a legend, an innovator, or an all-time puncher. He is still revered for his flow, and even with the steep drop-off from 2014 to 2021, he is still in the conversation as one of the best punchers of all time. 
So when people say B Magic fell from grace, I absolutely agree. However, I'm not an individual that believes that he has nothing left in the tank. Every so often, he gives us a glimpse of the vintage B Magic we know and love. In fact, in 2022, he had one of the best years he's had since 2014. He took on the likes of Danny Myers, Fonz, Pass, Fate, and was the most consistent he's ever been. So it's not a matter of if he still has it, but can he consistently put on great performances against quality competition? With all the things I've seen in his 13-year career and his run from 2011 to 2014, I will continue to be a believer in magic. I'ma be your best friend. Oh, <laughs> My nigga, I pimp harder. Magic, get your bitch dug out. She a bench warmer. Take you to the backyard and beat you through a fence corner. Oh my grizzly, magic wrapped the wolves like Vince Carter. You better come heated. I done seen a couple bodies before 21 seated. This the part you see the savage. I got 21 visas. You can find me in a park by myself like a 21 Prius. Nigga, we ready with a machete. Play. When people stopped believing in magic, I found out it was the fans who wasn't real in the first place. Oh, yeah. Yo, oh, great. Great. Uh, I'm proud of this bitch. Keep spitting that shit that put niggas on the ground with this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.